We are less than three days away from Pakistan's race to power as the country heads to a high-octane election complete with dramatic twists and turns. Poll campaigning is in full swing as major political parties are making a last-ditch effort to woo their voters. PMN and leader Nawaz Sharif carried out a massive rally. This ha happened in the Mure district of Pakistan's Punjab province. The former three-time Prime Minister recalled his time as Punjab's Chief Minister, highlighting his developmental efforts in the region. On the other hand, similar scenes were witnessed earlier today in Karachi, where Bilawal Bhutto Zardari led the PPP's campaign rally. One of Pakistan's youngest leaders, Bhutto Zardari is counting on the youth voters of Pakistan to help the party sail through in the upcoming elections. Now, Pakistan's race to power has turned into a two-party battle on the ground, with PTI rallies facing severe police crackdown. Sunday's gathering saw party workers clashing with security personnel that led to several activists getting injured. With Imran Khan's political fate sealed by back-to-back -back jail terms, the PTI is banking on its water base for an unprecedented return to power. But Pakistan's atmosphere remains volatile in the midst of election fever. Authorities in the Balochistan province have declared 80% of its polling stations as sensitive or very sensitive. The decision was made in response to a spurt of attacks on election candidates and security forces just last week. Balochistan has over 5,000 polling stations that are under intense scrutiny as pre-election violence escalates in the region. And to get us more updates from the ground, we are being joined by our Pakistan Bureau Chief, Anas Malik. Anas, thank you so much for joining us here on Vyond. What is the latest you're hearing? It seems like the campaign is on full swing, not just for the PPP, but also the PMLN. What's up with the PTI? Well, the Celsius has gone down in and around Islamabad and even in uh, parts of Pakistan. Uh, we've gotten into single digits. Uh, it's nine degrees right now, but the electoral temperature or the political temperature has been uh, heated up quite literally so with less than 24 hours remaining for the campaigning to end. The, the electoral campaign is now at its peak. Today, Nawaz Sharif, the former Pakistani prime minister, addressed uh, his political rally in Mari. Coincidentally enough, just uh, during his address, it started to snow, literally started to snow. Meanwhile, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari is out on his campaign trail in Karachi. He's going uh, town to town, city to uh, uh, street to street, literally, and uh, trying to woo in voters to vo vote for him uh, in about uh, that goes uh, when Pakistan goes to polls in about uh, 72 hours or lesser from now. Uh, so uh, the campaigning is all in, in its uh, in its utmost in full swing and it would be interesting as to who the people of Pakistan get to vote for in about uh, three days or less than two days time when Pakistan goes to polls on February the 8th. Ananya. Ayurat Anas, thank you for getting us all those updates from the ground and as you said the temperatures in single digits you take care. Now, the PTI has been largely out of the electoral process, as we said, and this is despite the surveys being in their favour. Our Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik, who has been covering the elections from the ground in Pakistan, brings you a report. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan's party has redefined election campaigning in Pakistan. with its social media rallies and use of AI technology. And this is in a bid to sidestep a nationwide crackdown that has followed it online. Khan was jailed in the build-up to the campaign. Censorship then followed as the party pushed its election campaign online. However, despite restrictions, PTI remains far ahead of its rivals when it comes to connecting online with the youth. They have also become the first party to use AI voice cloning technology, releasing a fresh speech by Khan from behind bars. But on the ground, how many people would know the PTI candidate of the area? No one is my preferred candidate. None of these leaders are concerned about the nation. 
all these candidates are campaigning and meeting the locals. That's a good thing. But I have one question. Last year during summers, when laborers earning 40,000 a month were finding it difficult to feed themselves, but the government was sending them electricity bills of 40,000, 50,000 a month. Where were these candidates during that time when people were begging to pay their bills? It is a one-sided election as there is no opponent. The elections should be contested fairly and equally. The present situation is that PTI is moving upwards. There are a lot of issues but no one seems to be addressing them. No one remembers roads before the elections. Who is contesting the election and with whom? There is no competition. We will make houses, we will give food and clothes. This is all right. Are these motives or our responsibilities? They are now able to see all these. They remember they had to do all of this, but they didn't do so. The PTI, despite being repressed, has employed strategies to ensure that their support base remains intact. From the use of AI to chatbots to dedicated websites, the PTI has outdone its political opponents. Just around the corner in Pakistan, the PTI is employing new tactics to get their narrative across. The people in the twin cities of Rawalpindi and Islamabad are of the opinion that PTI remains their party of choice in the upcoming elections. But they are also adamant of the reality and cease of the reality that the PTI is not very much part of the electoral process. They know that the ground is set and believe that Nawaz Sharif might just be coming back. Anas Malik, Islamabad, Pakistan, for Beyond, World is One.